Okay, we have a, a very fresh new cameraman here. Uh, are our numbers running, cameraman? Hope so. I don't know whether you can pick up any background noise. We're actually sat outside the hotel the morning after the Tournament of Champions. It's been a late night for me and my mate Ricardo here, but he's kindly agreed to show us uh, the Zolo. Now, Ricardo, your full name firstly is? Ricardo Forastieri. Okay, and you're a breeder of the Zolos, aren't you? Yeah, for many years, more than 20. Yeah. Okay, and this guy's name is? Papalote Caliente. So, Papa, now, this, I know I, I travelled back with this dog from the, uh, the Mexican Cow Club the other day. He loves to sit on you and he loves to lean and they're very warm, aren't they, as well? Yeah? Well, the temperature is e equal of the, any other dog, but the thing is that they are uncoated, so you can feel it. I know. And he's, a, he's a real leaning dog, and we get a lot of people are watching it behind us as well. Can you, just very briefly, because I know that the Mexican Kennel Club in, in Europe rescued this breed, can you just give us a very short history of how that happened? I'll pass the microphone to you so yeah, the dog... He can, he can talk something. Uh, the, the history of this breed is very ancient. It's well, one of the most ancient breeds. It's more than 3,000 years old. And what happened here is that uh, around the middle of the past century, uh, 40s, 50s, a, a group of people from FCM uh, went to the Sierra to look for uh, original Cholos Quintles in order to rescue because the first attempt of, of uh, having the breed internationally was from uh, American Kennel Club. Uh, uh, <laughs> now you have it. Uh, at the end, what happened? Yeah. At the end, what happened is that uh, Mexican Kennel Club started to res uh, rescue and register the breed. Now, uh, after 40s, 50s. Uh, this is uh, our main breed, of course. The Tell us about the sizes. How many different oh, wait. Sizes? We have uh, three sizes: the miniature, uh, intermediate, that is this guy, and yeah. the standard, that is around uh, the size of a boxer. Yeah. That says, uh, um, "This is a very nice dog to have. It's a r really, really wonderful uh, companion." Easy I to breed. Keep. Uh? Easy to keep. Super easy to keep. Uh, in, in fact, they are very clean. Not as other dogs. Very, very, very clean, uh, and they. They don't need any any uh, kind of a particular uh, care. No, be, you know what? There is a, this is a very rustic rustic uh, breed, yeah. so they are they can resist everything. We have yeah. sholos in Moscow, we have sholos in Canada, yeah. we have sholos everywhere, and they they get used to the to the weather very easily. He's, he's kind of a lively dog as well. He's always on the move around yeah. there. <laughs> and and um, how many? Uh, Zolos are there in the country, do you think, across the three sizes? Uh, how many? Uh, m m most than 12 or 15,000 dogs wow. in the country. But let me tell you, Russia have uh, around 6,000, and uh, there is very, a lot of, of Sholos now around the world. Sure. Yep. I and mean, I know a lot of people in uh, Europe, when they see this, will be very, very interested. And I'll probably try and get back to Ricardo in the future when, obviously, this has been a a late night an event and he's heading off now he's taking the dinner jackets back <laughs> <laughs> for everybody and uh, we're using cameraman from the hotel so before he gets into trouble i'd like to thank ricardo how do you say it again zolo solo it's squintly zolo squintly i think i've got it now so many thanks indeed safe journey home and thanks for everybody in uh, internationally for watching muchas gracias hasta luego